All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Miguel with Brown Bear Golf. Hope you're doing well, especially after that Players' Championship. How exciting was that? As you probably heard, I made some predictions about that on an earlier podcast. And then you can check out the podcast that we did with my friend Schloss post-final round. But today, we're here to talk to a new guest who I'm super excited about. I met on Instagram. And, you know, some of you don't know my history. I used to work in the golf industry for 10 years. I worked at a course in a pro shop for eight years. And then I worked in a golf retail store for a couple of years outside of the golf course. So I've been around the industry for some time. And I've got to say, as much as I'm a gearhead and a clothing junkie, I had never seen anything like the shoes that my next guest is going to talk to you about because he makes them. Now, these are shoes that you can get from a legacy brand like Nike or Adidas or whoever. But what he's doing with them is phenomenal. And it is reminiscent of what people do with their Harley Davidsons. It's reminiscent of what people do with leather work when they have an artisan crafted. And I had never seen anything like this. Um, as I've gotten into the Instagram community, I see this customization process facet of the game that's just blowing my mind. I see what people are doing with putter heads these days. It's fantastic. I see what they're doing with iron heads, with distressed looks, rust looks, blacked out. I mean, it's phenomenal. I'm super excited about this. And like I said, I've never seen anything like this at all. So I'm super excited uh, to introduce our next guest, who I said I saw a picture of the shoes that he made and started following him. And it turned out he's local, close to me in Phoenix, Arizona. And we started chatting, we've started chatting golf. And I was like, I gotta have him on because he's pe more people have got to know about what he's doing. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome Frankie from Sonoran Soul. Frankie, thanks for coming on to the show. How are you today? Well, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm doing well. It's awesome. great to be on. Yeah, I'm super excited. And um, like I said, I introduced you to a bunch of other people from around the country that we're all going to try and support each other on Instagram as well, too. So I hope that will get you some recognition. So I'm going to start off with these are relatively basic questions that I thought of, and I hope that they will help our you know, listeners and viewers understand where you're coming from. Um, I am going to be superimposing pictures of your product, if that's okay with you. Definitely. Yeah. So um, that for you viewers, you're going to see the pictures. I don't have them up right now, but I'm going to edit them in. So here we go. What's your golf background? So um, I, I started playing when I was like eight or, you know, um, just as a side sport. Um, I always played something else that was my main sport. But, you know, when the weather's nice, like many of us, I thought, okay, it's better. It's time to get out to the course a little bit, you know? And um, I played uh, lacrosse actually in college. And so, you know, doing this or playing a college sport, you are practicing a sport literally every day of your life. You right. and I have worked on some kind of sport. And so when you get out of school, you're like, what do I do every day? Right. I usually practice a sport. So um, I started going to the golf course every day. And uh, I went to the driving range and just hitting buckets of balls over and over and over uh, and just got addicted. So prior to you getting out of college, you never played organized golf like in high school or any uh, amateur leagues or anything like that? No, no, definitely yeah. not. And I mean, I had an okay swing, but if, if I, I never kept a handicap, but if I were to guess it'd be in the high twenties, probably okay. as a kid, you know, All right. um, I was never considered a player or right. anything like that. Well, based on what we've talked about, I'm going to consider you a player now, which shows you <laughs> that this is a game of a lifetime, right? Like you can get better as you get older, unlike so many other sports. That's one definitely. of the things I love about golf. Um, so speaking of that, what, tell our viewers, what are you playing at right now? Cause you keep a handicap. So I, 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 uh, I, I will say that part of the handicap is I did have a daughter about a year and a half ago. Okay. And so she, she factors into the handicap for sure, but I'm back up, I'm up to 1.9. So I'm doing okay. All right. Dude, keeping, that's awesome. keeping it somewhat together. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh, my God. I thought it was three something. Now I feel, uh, <laughs> excuse me. Wow, that's all right. 1.9. So, guys, ladies, he's good at golf. 
And guess what? That's not the only thing he's good at. Um, so for our viewers, what he's doing is he's painting on shoes and he's using airbrushing. And I'm not going to let him talk more about that, but I want, they haven't seen a picture of your product yet. So um, he's airbrushing shoes with customized art. And so that's kind of the next question. Now that we got your golf background, what, where did your art background come from? Because, I mean, you said you played lacrosse. It's not like you were in the studio during college, right? I mean, I'm assuming. You tell me. No, no. And, and probably, you know, I have probably more traditional parents in the fact that they would say, uh, if you wanted to get into art, you're not going to make any money, you know? Right. And uh, so you got to go concentrate on something else that's going to pay the bills. But, um, you know, since I was a little kid, I actually was always into drawing and um, painting and mainly drawing, though. And okay. cartoons, um, I was really into cartoons as a kid. Like, I used to love Cartoon Network, whether it's right. Looney Tunes or anime or, okay. you know, all, all wide range. Um, but I got into, you know, drawing those so take take your favorite character and just practice drawing them over and over and over and over and um so that's really where like my main art background is i just have always drawn on the side okay or you know painted i got into painting a little bit in college but nothing like i would painting, say is a masterpiece like, but was it like classical painting like with oils or pastels versus the airbrushing yeah it was i mean with brush you know brush work but it, i was more pop you know like i said right. i was really into cartoons so my art is always bold colors sure. and you know it it looks like cartoonish in a way right. you know that's that's how i uh how i express my art and so it comes out in my shoes too i Absolutely. i like bold colors you know and i like clean lines but you know not as much realism that's not as much my style right right well, speaking of the bold colors, um, my wife is native to Arizona and she loves living here. I'm not, but um, she loves uh, cacti. And the very first shoe that I saw of yours was cacti on the shoe. And I'm flipping through Instagram. And I say, look at this. This is amazing, right? And she goes, that's amazing. And that's what pulled me into your Instagram. And one of my favorite ones is the sloth. So I'm going to show both of those shoes up here. I really like what you did with the Chicago skyline, which is more realism. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I liked your New Mexico uh, or the balloons, the hot air balloons. Yeah, that um, was New Mexico. Yeah, my, my wife used to live in Gallup and we Gallup has the second largest hot air balloon festival in the country next to, I think, San Antonio, which is also obviously in New Mexico, right? Or wait. No, Santa yeah. Fe. Right, Santa, Santa Fe. Sorry. Not yeah, Santa right. Um, but I, I was fortunate because it was a bucket list item and she had connections. And so we got to go and um, it, it was amazing. But I also felt a connection to that. So my wife feels a connection to your work. I feel a connection to your work. I've never been to Chicago, but when I saw that skyline, I was like, this is phenomenal stuff. Um, I never, I, I, well, I take it back. I did go to Chicago in college, but I went. <laughs> It was a very short trip, and that was it was just for lacrosse. So, usually on on lacrosse trips, right. you don't get to see a lot of sightseeing. But we saw a little bit. Right, but. right. Um, my wife was a college athlete too. Me, not so much. <laughs> where did you? Where are you from? So I actually grew up in uh, Ahwatukee here in Phoenix. Okay. So I went to school down at U of A. Okay. All right. Um, interestingly enough, even though my wife is a native here she learned to row at Tempe town Lake and got a scholarship to be a rower up wow. in at Sac state. So yeah, it's interesting. Like I don't think of a kid who comes from Phoenix, Arizona being a rower where I grew up on the Potomac river in Virginia, I would see rowers. It's a real river. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> right. Georgetown rowers that George Washington rowers. And when I was in college, they tried to recruit me to be on it. And I was like, I know what you guys do. You guys get up at like 4.30 in the morning and get on icy waters. No thanks. I'm not having that. Um, okay, so one last thing. You mentioned cartoons and anime. When I was a kid, I was so into Robotech. Do you know what that is? Okay, I I do. I, I feel like I do know that, but um, remind me a little bit because I, I swear I know it. 
So Robotech was out kind of around the same time that Transformers was, but obviously okay. it's, um, it's anime and it was mm -hmm. the story of an alien invasion on earth and the humans got access to their technology and learned how to build uh, mech warriors. So the jets would turn into robots and they used them to fight the alien invaders. Okay. It was a song. Yeah, I, mean, it was, it, I, I swear it sounds familiar. So I'm going to put a picture of that in it. there too. But it was a soap <laughs> okay. opera. It was less like Transformers and more a soap opera. Right, where right. The humans were coping with this invasion. So anyways, um, now I might have to commission you to give me a shoe with the jet fighters on it. And they're, oh my God, now, woo! <laughs> we have to get into uh, that. Yeah, all right, I let's keep going with the questions. Um, all right, so you, you essentially were self-taught your art through practice and on your own. <clears throat> So here's the next logical question, I think. You got into golf because you had kind of a pastime with it, leisure, recreational, as a young man. And then when you get out of college, it becomes a little bit more a part of your life because lacrosse is no longer a part of your life. You always were drawing right. as a kid in school and cartoons and stuff like that. So the next logical question is, how did you put the two together? Like, who says... These are two things I like. I'm going to put them together. Like, did, did someone push you into it? Is it something you came upon on yourself? I mean, um, so I guess, you know, customizing shoes had been on my radar for like a little bit, um, you know, a little bit of time, probably since even since high school. Like, I remember when people were customizing like Air Force Ones when like, you know, Nelly was singing about them and stuff, right. you know? Yeah. So, um, but I remember learning that it was a process to do it right. And you had to like, you know, get acetone and all this. So I always kind of put it off it on the back burner. Okay. But, um, you know, all through college, I was getting custom cleats by Nike ID. Um, okay. You know, and I would get them in this different colors and all that stuff. And I just would love geeking out on right. designing my cleats, you know, and figuring out what they would get, what kind of wrap, you know, what I was going to put on the back or whatever, you know, stuff like that. And so, um, you know, I wanted to buy some Nike ID golf shoes. Now that I'd gotten into golf, I'd always had custom shoes and they didn't really, they don't really sell them. No. And, um, and so they used to sell like a few pairs. Now I, I don't even think they sell any anymore. No. And so, um, <coughs> I was like, well, maybe I need to like learn how to, you know, customize shoes because I know you can do it. And uh, essentially when, you know, COVID hit and changed the world or whatever, and we all stopped for two weeks, I figured, well, uh, let's uh, learn how to, how to do this. And so I just went on a deep dive down into YouTube and watched video after video after video after video. Um, Dylan De Jesus of De Jesus Custom uh, Footwear, he's like, the teacher and the master. So if anybody out there wants to learn, go look up his videos on YouTube because he knows it all. But um, but yeah, I just did a deep dive and I bought you know all this stuff as cheap as possible, which is obviously the wrong way to do it. But you know, it's you're like ah, oh, this might not even work, you right. know. But um, yeah, and so I I just did worked on my own shoes. I did two pairs for myself. I was planning on doing four and uh, I only made it to two because then one of my friends asked me to do a pair okay. and another friend asked me to do a pair. <coughs> Before you know it, um, I'm doing it for strangers and uh, I've still only done the two pairs for myself. <laughs> so, we'll, <laughs> we'll see. Maybe right, I'll right. get some done. Well, so I find this, I'm really glad to get that story because part of me, before we really chatted, you know, one of the questions I had, and now I've got the answer, but I'm just going to say it out loud. I thought this guy's got to be tatted up. You know, this, this guy's, he's a tattoo artist or he's a tattoo addict. And, and, and this is an extension of his body on shoes. Are you a tattoo artist? Right. <laughs> no, right. I am not. I, right. but, you know, it's funny because a lot of customizers are tattoo artists. And right. it's very, they, a lot of people say it's very related um, work. 
But yeah, so, I have no tattoos. Okay. I can never commit. <laughs> right. Same here. I've got no tattoos. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I immediately assumed that you were a tattoo artist or a graphic design artist, or maybe I, I had a background briefly in the film industry. I thought maybe you were um, like a storyboard artist or something like that. The fact that I now know that you got, you had the background like you did with golf from your earlier years, but then you fine tuned it, right? You said mm -hmm. you were a 20 plus handicap. Now you're playing at 1.9. You said you used to doodle cartoons and now you're selling products because people are wowed by what you're doing. Man, you're an inspiration yeah. to me now because I'm 44 years old and I'm thinking like, I'm not really good at anything. Like, is there something I could sink my teeth into and get good at? And now right. I see what you're doing. <clears throat> Super inspirational, man. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I mean, I had questions like maybe if he's not a tattoo artist, maybe he's got a Harley or maybe he's got a classic car that he does paint work on or something. This guy's got to have some background. But the fact that you were just like, I wanted some Nike ID. They didn't have it. So I did it on my own. That's amazing, right? Like that. Yeah, right. God, hey, that <laughs> that's, kind of, that's kind of that's kind of how it works. Yeah, that's right. that's a simple way. Of it, but yeah, so I didn't have what I wanted, so I made it. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, you know what's interesting about that? I started this YouTube channel and uh, Instagram <clears throat> because my wife said you're always complaining that the guys who talk about golf on your YouTube videos are all British or Scottish, <laughs> and that none of them have brown skin. <laughs> So she said, I, why don't you, you make your own videos? And, you know, here we are, right? Like, so I, I don't have an accent. I've got yeah, that's so, yeah. that is that is so funny. I've noticed that watching YouTube videos. Now that you think about it, but the, sometimes the accent's nice. You know, you're just you're just yeah. trying to rest the eyes. You know, that soft British tone. Absolutely. Work. Well, my <laughs> meditation app, my sleep app, it's Andy. And he's got this English accent. And now my girls are like can we listen to Andy when I put him to bed? So, <laughs> that British accent Love is soothing it. to them too, right? <clears throat> yeah, All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so since we have chatted a little bit before, I know you have a full-time gig just like I do. I guess my question is, um, you know, how do you manage your full-time gig, your family, um, the artwork, which is becoming a side business, is it not? I mean, this isn't just for fun anymore, right? Right, right. Yeah, and then, no, and definitely. Then, and then playing golf, right? Because these are, these are things that seem like you're passionate about. So how do you maintain work, family, art, and golf? I don't do a lot of sleeping. Uh, that's one of the things you didn't mention there. <laughs> right, there you go. But um, yeah, no, seriously, though, in a way, it's... I. I I, uh, I'm doing something at all, all times of the day, you know, right. um, you know, wake up, I, I hang out with my daughter and my wife, and then I go, we go to work and we have family time afterwards. I, and then we put her to bed, uh, my daughter to bed about seven o'clock oh, and that's from great. then until, till one, two, three, whatever in the morning, I, uh, I paint shoes or work on shoes. <laughs> so Wait, uh, is that your regular that's, that's routine like a nightly business yeah that's like a nightly routine for me right now you're literally moonlighting <laughs> yeah one to two or three, <laughs> and that's your daily routine yeah yeah you know what if i could stay up that late i might get good at something too <laughs> it's, yeah, it, it's it's good yeah that's awesome all right it's pretty quiet it's pretty quiet around 2 30 in the morning in here i can tell you wow dude. straight on <laughs> that's insane man um so i mentioned i said this isn't just for fun anymore it's, it's a side business so i think the next question for me is where are you content with where it's at right now or where do you see the possibilities going with specifically your art? Like, do you see yourself, um, what if somebody wants to commission you to do a wall in their clubhouse? Or what if somebody wants you to put this on the sole of their mallet putter? Or, you know what I mean? Like, have you, have you already been offered commissions to extend past shoes? Are you thinking about clothes, hats, 
what's you know yeah i i haven't thought about um something like that you know outside of it uh I will, I probably would be open, open to that. You know, I, I've never really painted a wall before. So that they'd have to be, you know, good, good with that part. Right. But um, I think, you know, just like YouTube, there's everything's on YouTube. You can, yeah. you can learn it, you know, but um, yeah, I mean, I think that we're, we always want our, our businesses to grow, sure. you know, and um, you know, maybe ideally that one day I'm, it's what I'm doing during the day rather right. than what I'm doing at night, you know? Right. Um, but yeah, I, I think that I, I'd love to grow beyond just shoes, you know, right. or into maybe into more soft goods and, and stuff like that. You know, right. fashion's always been kind of a, a side um, passion of mine too. Although I have a lot of them, as you can see, but um, you know, I think that that would be a natural uh, evolution of the business, you know, sure. there was a reason I didn't call it, you know, Connell Customs, like a lot of other people do, because I felt like if I was ever going to eventually make like a t-shirt, I wouldn't want someone else's last name on my chest, right. sure. you know, and so that's where I thought, okay, well, let's come up with something that could be more of a brand and more right. than just custom shoes, you know, and so right. that's where Sonoran Soul really came from i thought that it could be something bigger than than just painting on shoes one day right and 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 i really really like that you said not your last name because ultimately your vision is it could be bigger than you right, right? instead of thinking about just me and i'm not i'm not crapping on people whose companies are named after themselves but he right. said it himself, he's thinking of a broader vision. And I like that aspect that this isn't just about me. It's not about customers, clients, or people identifying with me as an individual. It can be anything that they want to latch onto. For me, it was the hot air balloons and the cacti, right? It, it wasn't so much you. I mean, I like right. you now that we've talked, but how many people are going to get a chance to talk to the designer, right? And so I like that you're thinking on a more broad scale. I think that's awesome. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking at my questions. I apologize. I, I, should, be, <laughs> I should be professional about this. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah. So we talked about you potentially looking at other aspects like clothing, possibly equipment. But here's the next question. What about other sports? Like if you get a local yeah. high school team that says, "Hey, we want customized shoes for our, tra or, you know, a travel team." Travel teams have a little more money than a high school team, but whatever. Or, or you know, um, some baseball team, NFL team says, "Hey, we're trying to hit a new market. Would you do something like this? Are you open to that too, or are you a purist with the golf?" No, I, um, you know, golf is is what got me into it. I mean, golf is my passion, but, you know, I think any of the sports would be great. And obviously, um, you know, especially at that top, top level, uh, whether it's the PGA, the LPGA, or, you know, especially the NFL, uh, MLB, NBA, you know, I think all of that, it would be on the table. Right. And, um, you know, th there's guys in all those leagues wearing custom shoes right now. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's not maybe every day or whatever, but, um, but I think the, the market's only growing and sure. people are becoming more individual. The owners are allowing players to be more individual right. too, which was, you know, definitely didn't happen in the past. And, and especially like you think of baseball, Right. They're they're just now coming on board to like, OK, yeah, you can do some of this stuff. But um, I think that's only going to open up. And I think there's an opportunity. Uh, and yeah, in all those sports. Right. I mean, I had someone contact me about doing bowling shoes and I know someone who specializes in customizing bowling shoes. So, I mean, all sports are on the table. Right. There's a market <laughs> for it. Right. Yeah. And, 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 you know. I've, I've talked with other guests before who get a little, and you don't have to talk with me details, but I, you know, I, I had a podcast with two designers of clothes. They started small boutique golf fashion companies and we didn't talk numbers, but I, you're bringing up some things that 
realistically are, are financially based, right? Like if you're going to start a business, you have to invest personally into it. But if you're going to grow the business, you've got to make money. And when you say that there's a bowling shoe customizer, that goes to show you that not only are people uh, willing to spend money on customization, but they're willing to do it in places that we never even thought of, right? Right, Just like right. before I saw your stuff, I never thought of customizing golf shoes because that predominantly, I'm from Washington, D.C., uh, played basketball in high school. That predominantly is a pretty urban thing, right? Yeah, and so we're going to get into that in a little, bit, a little bit more in the conversation. But making money affords you the opportunity to reach more. I mean, it is what it is, right? right. Some people are like, no, I want to be a a purist in design and artistry. I'm not going to branch out. Other people are like, no, let's blow this thing up and hit as many people as we can. Let's spread the word that that diversity and styles and, and and inspiration can spread and they can be pervasive out there. And I, I love what you're doing, dude. And I hope it blows up for you. The other thing Thank um, you. I wanted to talk to you about <clears throat> was I've already given you some of my favorite, the cacti shoe with the desert. Uh, I, I, I love the sloth, dude, because those colors pop. I yeah. showed my daughters who are young and I was like, what do you think of this? They're like, oh, wow, that's so cute. And <laughs> it, it just, it does, it pops, right? And right. golf shoes are very classic and kind of stuffy. And the most loud shoe recently has been the Adidas Code Chaos because it's bold. It has these sharp lines and bright colors and it's not... Uh, symmetrical um mm -hmm. i actually did a review on that you guys can check that out on my channel it's a plug there um but what you're doing is far beyond what adidas or a major corporation is doing because you're making it individual so what are the three top pieces you've made for you what do you think are your three top pieces and were they strictly commissions or was it one day you were like that's 2.30, I have to be at work in four hours. I'm going to get started on something new. Yeah, um, so, I mean, they're all they're like my children, so okay. I don't know if I really like to pick necessarily <clears throat> favorites, um, you know, because honestly, I'm proud of all of them. And right. what's cool is uh, most of my stuff has been commissioned, so they all have a special meaning to the customer. Sure. Which, doesn't always i mean that doesn't come across on instagram right and i'll have you know i might have shoes that they so to speak don't do as well on instagram but you know what the person loved them and right. because they meant something to them right and so that's that's cool to me and that's something that you don't always get on instagram with likes and saves and right. whatever like that but you know some of the some of the things that i guess you know to point out some some shoes that I'm proud of and some of the work I've done is definitely like the sloths were cool. Um, I, I, I thank my customer because he asked me to do these sloths and I had never done anything like that um, on a shoe before. So there was no past experience to like, or proof that I could even pull this off, you know, and he just trusted in me to, to make it happen. And so I love how those turned out and, right. um, you know, the shading, I, you know, I, I really worked on shading, which is tough with an airbrush and stuff. And right. um, so I was proud of those ones. Um, this other pair I did, and I'm sure you'll show them, but the uh, Kansas City Chiefs pair I did, yeah. uh, they, they were to celebrate the Super Bowl. And what I thought was so cool about them is I was looking at the paneling of the shoe and sometimes it's hard because depending on the, how the shoe is paneled, you can't do certain designs on certain shoes because it's okay. just going to look funny if it goes over a bunch of different layers and stuff. Right. But the way that the back came together for these Kansas City ones, there was just a seam in the middle and it was just a smooth back. And I thought, what if we can make the back look like that seam was the seam of a football yeah. and put those laces on there. Oh, and I, I painted the laces on, I individually put on dots um, of a football. So 
I mean, when you see them in person, you almost like want to touch the laces. Right. And they're, they're not there. I mean, it's all paint. Right. So um, those are some of my, you know, most proud moments right. of like, you know, my artistic ability. Sure. And then, um, you know, I think always a fan favorite for me is, is really anything that's Arizona. Sure. Um, and that, that's a lot of my pairs, you know, and um, I think that's, that's really cool because, you know, growing up, I was the kid who lived in Arizona and, you know, California is always really cool. New York's always really yeah. cool. You know, you go into stores and the artwork all says California or New York and the pictures, everything, <clears throat> the clothing. I mean, I worked at Hollister in high school, which I'm sure everybody will laugh at. But, you know, like <laughs> I worked at J. <laughs> Crew, man, in the gap. Yeah. But you know, like California was always the cool place. And right. I, you know, as a honestly, as an Arizona kid, you always had like a little bit of that jealousy of that you know, I wish I grew up in California. Right. But now that I've gotten older and I've lived here more of my life and I've seen, you know, the native artwork, just the, I mean, the natural artwork of just, yeah. you know, the desert. I think there's a lot of things that we can appreciate as Arizonans. And that's actually really cool. You know, like, like you said, you saw those cactus cacti on shoes and you're like, Nobody puts cacti on shoes. Right, that's exactly. Palm, tree, palm trees are all over the place. Right, but like this is Arizona, you know. Nobody thinks Arizona is cool. Right. So, um, you know that I think is really, really special to me when I get to put something that shows the desert um, right. on the shoe. Yeah. Well, and here's the reality: despite our affinity for it, because we live here, right? The reality is, is our state population is growing. One and two. People from all over the world come here to Phoenix and Scottsdale specifically for golf. And when they do see a sunset, you know, when you see some of these mountains during the day, they're brown. But at a sunset, they turn all kinds of different colors. And so does the Sonoran Desert. I mean, the blues, the pinks, the purples, the yellows are things that I didn't see when I lived in the East Coast below a tree line. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that when people come visit here, and it's becoming more prevalent with our tourism industry prior to COVID, right? I think people are leaving with a sense of awe and a sense yeah. of uh, reverence for everything that you just talked about, right? Definitely. Not just the sunsets, but the cacti. Certain right. plants that they've never seen and never will see anywhere else except in the Sonoran Desert, which is the most diverse ecosystem in the entire country, from what I believe the number of plants that we have so super cool man um i want to touch back on one thing that i thought about when we were talking about business you said it's a thriving market and it's something that's there bloomberg business weekly two weeks ago on the front cover of their magazine had a picture i i gotta find it i'll put it on the i'll superimpose that also of a sneaker with some gold chains and around it and it said the title this is the front picture of their entire magazine this isn't just a shoe this is a commodity and it's one that has outlived almost anything else during this pandemic right we want to identify with something and with you we can identify with something that we tell you this is me or like what i saw you created something and i said i can identify with with what this artist created so i just wanted to jump back I do this a lot. Sorry, that's how I go back and forth. Thoughts going. Um, all right, so we've talked about your kind of long-term goals. We, we've talked about the possibility of this blooming into something else. Right now, though, what are your short-term goals? Like, are you working on a project right now, and you've got a deadline for a customer, or have you thought to yourself, you know what? I only have two for myself. I need my, I need my third and fourth pair. So I'm taking a break from the customers. I'm going to, you know, like, what are your short-term goals right now? Yeah. Well, yeah, I have, I have multiple deadlines, multiple <laughs> deadlines. So <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's always, uh, I'm, it, it, I'm always a little bit behind schedule probably, you know, but I'm always an optimist. So right. I always think I can get it done, but yeah, I, uh, I think in the short term, you know, aside from taking care of my current customers, um, 
I'd, I'd love to get on a professional athlete's foot. Um, awesome. You know, I think that would be, that's be one of my next steps, you right. know, and I have some people that are close, but haven't, haven't f- quite uh, pulled the trigger yet. But um, I think that'd be one of my good short-term go- goals. And does it, you know, mean a whole lot? Maybe not, not really, you know, but um, I think it just help with some, some of the level of credibility. Right. And um and I just think it'd be fun, you know, yeah, just to say that, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I I love painting for regular people too. Right. You know, right. Um, everybody's got these backstories, and it's so much fun to interact with them and figure out what they want and why they want it. So right. that's awesome. I think that's a great short term goal. I didn't. Even, so here I've been talking about like, oh, he could be doing helmets for the NFL or whatever, and 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 you went down a little bit more tangible. Let's get it on the shoe of a professional athlete first. That's, yeah. I think that's a great short-term goal. So what? once I show your pictures and once we try and get people on your Instagram page, um, how can they get something done for themselves? Like, So I think the best way is just, just message me. Um, you know, find me, find my page and, and message me and we go from there. Do you and, have um, a web page outside of Instagram? I guess that's one of my other short-term goals I'm working on. Um, it's in the works. I, I technically I own it, own a web uh, a domain. domain. I just uh, haven't built the site yet, but that's in the works. Come and see. So, but right now though, if they want to get in touch with you, it's going to be Sonoran at Sonoran Soul Instagram. Yes. Okay. Yes. Awesome. And I'll Instagram, put that in there. I'm on, I am on Facebook too. Um, okay. and, but yeah, Instagram is probably the main, main following. Okay. So I'm, I'll, I'll put that in there also. Um, yeah. So you can see his work on Instagram. He's got pictures up there. And then if you want to work with him, you got to reach out to him by direct messaging him through Instagram. Um, well, dude, First of all, this is fun getting to hear your background and getting to hear your motivation. And um, I was inspired by the fact that you did all this stuff kind of a little bit later in life, but I'm not staying up till three. So I have to, <laughs> I'm just going to have to live and accept mediocrity and, <laughs> and, uh, and just be content with enjoying your artistry. And I hope we get to play golf soon. And yeah, I'll just have definitely. to let go. I can't compete with this guy. Just watch what he does on the course and enjoy it. You know? Um, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm out of questions right now. I really appreciate your time. I love how you dove into my questions. You really gave me what I wanted. Other times I have to pull teeth, but with you, it just came out. It was very natural. So I appreciate that. No, thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate you having me on. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Yeah, it's been fantastic, man. Thank you so much. I'm going to reach out to you a little bit later, but thank you guys. Thank you ladies for watching, uh, hit them up. I'm going to put link in the comment section. Please hit me up DM. If you want to talk to me a little bit more about what he's doing and I'll connect you with him. You want to go play golf with us because you live in Phoenix and Scottsdale. Come do it. Let's do it. Come on. It's a community. Let's do it. All right, guys. (laughs) Hey, take care, Frankie. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.